Okay, so hello everybody. I'm very happy to start this session about fashion and feminism with our great panelists, Shachar Avnet and Nofar Khatuka from Cookie. Um, today we will talk about what is fashion and feminism, what is part of it, and how do they design um, a feminine design or a design that meant to empower women. So this is, as I said, if you didn't hear it before, this is our third part out of a series of conversations, fashion that matters. Um, and we will start now. So in case you don't familiar with me, uh, somehow, my name is Liraz Cohen Mordechai, but you can call me Liri. And I'm the owner of a company called Fashionating by Liri. The mission of the company is to tell the story of Israel from a unique perspective of fashion. And by that, to really empower uh, and support the local Israeli fashion industry. We operate both in North America and in Israel. In North America, we do lectures and runway shows, now through Zoom and virtual tours through Zoom. And then in Israel, we operate as an educational tour company. Um, so once the pandemic is over, hopefully and vaccine is on so we'll hope that you will join us in israel for fashion tours to actually meet the designers in their own studios so now let's start fashion and feminism please make sure to send questions through the chat box we will follow that uh constantly okay so when we're thinking about feminism in fashion, as I said, this is our conversation today with Shachar and Nafar. Um, these are different ways you can communicate with me, but I will have this slide also at the end. Um, the most important one is, I guess, the Instagram, Fascinating by Leary, or if you want to email me, so it's Leary at fascinatingbyleary.com. So when you think about fashion and maybe women, you kind of think about that image here of sex in the city. We have four beautiful women who dress really nice. Um, each one of them is dressed and kind of like tell her personality and convey her personality through the clothes that she choose. They're powerful. Um, and this is kind of what the fashion industry wants us to believe that that's the way it should be and that's the way it operates. But when we're thinking about fashion and feminism, we should also take into consideration other factors uh, about that. The number one thing is who is working in the fashion and textile industry. So from the 80 million people who are working in the textile industry, we're talking about 85% who are women. This kind of percentage alone doesn't mean anything. Okay, there are more women who are working in the textile industry. What, why is it bad? Why is it not as good? Um, there are a few factors for that. There are a few reasons. The number one is uh, the wage. Um, in the textile industry, it's probably one of the lowest paying industries in the world. So the women are not getting paid enough. But also when we're thinking about the conditions that women, mainly in development countries, are working in, uh, we're talking about lots of hours, very specific kind of work, not easy to maintain that type of work. Um, and in terms of the, the terms of the job, most of them don't have uh, a contract, they're not getting their rights, maternity leave, pensions, and all of these type of things. So when we're thinking of that, uh, we cannot just say that like the engine who starts kind of the fashion industry is women, but they're not necessarily empowering them within the industry itself. Now, also when we're thinking about the way we present ourselves outside, um, you can say, okay, there was a lot of progress when it comes to fashion and feminism. We're not in these two images um, that, uh, that you can see on the screen at the moment. Uh, we're, we are not choked to that by the corset, and we're not necessarily in the kitchen with our beautiful high heels. This is not kind of the image that today women are supposed to um, to be at, or maybe we are, because if you're kind of examining Victoria's Secret's um, angels, this is the type of look that women supposed to look like. Um, so even in the presentation of women in the fashion industry, we supposed to look like these beautiful models that I wish I looked like them, uh, but I'm not that tall and I'm not that skinny and I'm 
definitely not that beautiful. Um, so these are different things that are talking with us when it comes to fashion that we're supposed to wear these high heels, we're supposed to wear this kind of lingerie and feel comfortable with ourselves, and of course we're supposed to be beautiful. So why should we start taking ownership as women on what's going on in the fashion industry? So I love that kind of uh, t-shirt of your, we should all be feminist and we should take ownership because what's go going on is that the fashion industry is expected to grow but almost 5% by 2025. And this is the women fashion industry. And that's because more women are now working women. More women are, um, have the means to actually buy and, and make themselves more comfortable with their fashion. And that means that we have more power. When we have the money, we have the power to choose what we're buying and what we wearing. So us as, as powerful women, we can choose to determine and to tell the designers, this is what, what we want to see. This is what we want to see in terms of the design. This is the kind of rights that we ask for other uh, sister women who are working in other countries. This is the way that we, that we want the fashion industry to move forward. Um, so today in our conversation, we're going to talk with both Shachar and Ufar about their perspective um, as fashion designers and the way that they are taking ownership on, on bringing more feminism into the fashion industry. So I would like to start with uh, the introduction of both Shachar and um, Nofa. So Shachar, maybe you can start by telling a little bit about yourself. Shachar, I think you're on mute. Okay. okay. So first of all, thank you for invite, inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here and to talk about uh, this, I will say, the most important subject in the fashion world, in my opinion. Um, I will tell the story uh, about my brand from a feminist perspective. So in shortly, I will say that I have um, a, my own brand, uh, Shachar of Net, and I'm doing a uh, both a ready to wear, couture and bridal collection. And the motto of the brand is love yourself, which I will tell you why in a bit. Um, and I'm working inside of Israel and also outside of Israel and doing a lot of, I will say, um, cooperation and uh, working with the music industry. So I dressed already, uh, my brand is a bit young, it's like, a, three years old, but I already dressed uh, Beyonce uh, five times, and uh, Zendaya, and uh, Kelly Rowland, and Iggy Azela, Elizabeth Moss, and, and many more. Um, but if we're talking about feminism, so I will tell you that when I was a student in Shankar, in the second year, uh, I had to choose some um, course, but to do like a very, uh, once a week, very small course, and I decided I will go um, to talk about feminism and uh, the differences between boys and girls, like uh, migdal, how do you say it in English? Gender. Gender, yeah, gender. And a very interesting, uh, I will say, uh, process I've been through in this uh, course, because one of the, it was for all the design um, uh, subject of, uh, like there's a lot of people that are uh, studying in Shankar, not only fashion, but when the teacher started to talk about gender, she was starting from the fashion industry. And for me, it was very interesting to, um, to realize that uh, I'm going, here I am, I'm a student of fashion and it's like um, my dream to become a fashion designer. But then at the same time, I'm discovering that uh, uh, the fashion industry has uh, a lot of impact, uh, like bad impact on women. And for me, it was like, it doesn't make sense because like most of the, of the women that I know are buying fashion. So it's supposed to be for us. Um, and it was the first like um, thought in my mind that maybe if, if I will have my own business one day, I'm going to do it for women and not like... Um, I don't know, to make uh, man, uh, some uh, manipulation, like to make them to buy something. I'm gonna do it for them because I love 
I love women and uh, I'm doing it out of love. So it was the first time that uh, I really realized that the fashion industry is actually making um, a lot of women not to love themselves, to hate themselves, to look at the mirror and think like really bad thoughts about themselves and about their body. And I thought it's really like a, a miserable circle because even if you look so fabulous, you don't feel fabulous. So why do you look fabulous? Like, what is it worth? Like we're doing so many things in order to be beautiful, but in the end of the day, this gorgeous model that everyone looked at her and say she is perfect, she doesn't feel perfect. And at the same time, I was a fashion student in Shankar and it was really a regular thing to have a model passing out in the middle of um, a class. So we are doing like a fashion and we did it um, to the very small size, like to models. And then she, she will come to the class. She was 15 or 17 and she didn't eat all day. And then she was trying dresses and she was like on the floor. And it was a regular thing. We actually had this process when someone uh, going out and bring some chocolate, give her like 15 minutes, she will eat some chocolate, she will drink water and she will feel better. And for me, I was like really in shock because dude, she's like passing out. Like it, she doesn't suppose like to be in this situation and she's a child. So for me, it was a bit shock. And at the same time, I'm like, uh, all of my life have been uh, like uh, the big girl. I'm not so big, but all of my friends were always uh, skinnier than me. So when I was 15 and I went to buy uh, jeans for my body, I suddenly realized that in Israel, we don't have my size on the store. And I was feeling really bad about myself. So taking this memory from the age of 15 uh, together with what I learned in Shankar, I decided that if I'm gonna like step into the fashion industry, so my b business and my brand is gonna be doing everything possible like in my hand to help women to feel better about themselves, to buy in a smart, in a smart way, and maybe to realize that the job of the fashion is just to make them feel good. So maybe it's not so important always to try to be skinny or to try to be, I don't know, the quiet girl. Maybe you can take fashion and use it just the way like any day, whatever you want, but in order to make yourself feel better and the people around, me, around you maybe to smile a bit, um, so this is like the place that I'm going, uh, that I'm like coming when I meet my client. And I will say that about bridal, and this is like the last thing that I will say, that bridals, when they are coming to me, for me, it's like the most holy um, process I can go like uh, with clients. So I always say, it's like, it, you, before you come, just come like and be happy. Get up in the morning, do something you love, and then come and do it with love, like, because you're getting married. And there's not one or two, like many clients are saying that I made the, the, the experience of choosing their own wedding dresses into something fun and pure love, and that it's uh, out of, like, ordinary, like most of the places are difficult or so I will say that I think this is the process we should go through every morning when we are looking in the mirror. We should do everything that we can in order to make ourselves being happy. That's amazing, Shaha. That's really inspiring. And I think your brand truly, um, you can see it with every one of the clothes that you're designing, basically. And we will talk about different items that are connected to that. Thank you, Shaha. Uh, Nofar. Hi. So feel free yeah. to, uh, to tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, just a second. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to us for having me today. Um, 
I'm very excited to be here with Chacha Ravnet, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about two subjects that are very close to my heart, fashion and feminism. So my name is Nofar Khatuka. Um, I'm the owner and designer of Cookie Studios. And for me to start and explain about the studio, I have to go back to the past and to my childhood. Growing up in a family that came from uh, German and Yemen, living in an Ashkenazi European neighborhood uh, was very confusing uh, for me. Through the year passed by, I had mixed feeling about who I am and what does it mean uh, to have a Yemenite background or even what does it mean to be a Yemenite woman. I was always looked for a deeper and intimate connection to my roots. Um, so I decided to dedicate my final project at Visual Communication Department, uh, first of all to myself and then to my family and my roots. Uh, the first thing that I did is to go to fashion. It wear the traditional Yemenite um, dress that worn on the henna ceremony. Also, no, this Fabi, I'm thing. sorry to interrupt. We can't see the, the slides. If you have slides, we see just a um, like, uh, yeah, like black screen. And now? No. Still a black screen. And now, also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let okay, me see. Now we now see. okay, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay. okay. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Um, Thanks. So, um, as I said, the first thing that I did, I went to the fashion and wear the henna ceremony uh, dress that is the most beautiful and rich uh, garment there is in the heritage. It, it was really a powerful moment for me. Um, the costume was very heavy. I mean, in both way, also physically and mentally. Uh, in that moment, I felt that I'm starting my journey, my journey to find myself and my identity. Um, my final project called uh, Yemenism, and it was a research book. Um, Yemenism is a new approach on ancient culture through the eyes and voices of Yemenite women. I took the henna uh, ceremony, uh, ceremony dress and divided it to four chapters, talking about her beliefs, a uh, future, uh, intimate and erotic songs, home, society, uh, her status, and fashion. Uh, these uh, women, um, as like other Arab immigra immigrants, uh, had to remove um, any cultural identity from their uh, desire to blend, to blend in the society in Israel. Therefore, I created the fourth chapter I hope you can see it here, okay. Uh, I created the first chapter and I asked, how can we wear culture today uh, with values of femininity and body? I took a small pieces from the henna ceremony uh, dress and, and I created them a new jewelry from uh, acrylic and glass. When I finished university, I don't know if you can hear me with the sound. <laughs> and when I finished university, I had the need to go with my family on me. I'm just gonna, okay. With my family on me, uh, literally. I use photos of my family and the Yemenite amulet as my logo. Uh, this amulet was used for specific beliefs um, uh, back then and now we can ask whatever and whoever we want uh, to wish for. Soon I realized that people are interested in those women and their stories. Um, at that point I realized another thing um, that the dream of that six years old girl had become reality and I have a fashion studio. The first collection I called Yemenism of course.
Um, and now um, the current collection. Uh, uh, the current collection, the third, calls Flowers from the Desert. Uh, this collection is all about the thought of creating a new life from that subject in a paradox of the desert which can grow no life. Um, the collection contains prints out of real scanned flowers, um, acrylic glass, uh, flowy and stretchy fabrics, um, jackets, sets of tops and trousers, bags and jewelry. Um, the last thing that I want to say is that uh, my main goal in uh, Tiamanism when I started was to create conversation between people. And I feel now that I can do it through fashion and I can uh, reach more people in that way. And, and therefore to create a real conversation about roots, uh, femininity and beliefs. That's it for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nafa. I think it's super interesting what you said first about the idea of creating a conversation through the clothes that you're designing. And this is exactly what we're doing now, uh, creating this conversation. But also what you said before about um, how do we wear our culture in a way? Mm -hmm. it's, it's super interesting to think about it that way. Um, and not only how we wear our culture, but how do we wear our messages that we want to convey to the rest of the world about who we are as, as women um, and what's important for us, what's our values and so on. Um, so Shahar, maybe I'll start with you. Um, you each one of your collection is basically part of your life, personal life journey, right? Um, and you have names for each one of the collections based on that. And I'm just wondering if your personal, uh, how much of this journey actually encounter with the subject of feminism and gender personally, or is it something that was more uh, broad as an issue? So I will say that as like always, I feel that um, who I am is my brand, and my brand is who I am, but at the same time, it's not the same. Like, there's what Shachar of Net, like the person is going through. Um, I don't know, someone is ill, someone is healthy, my friends, my family, and like, I will say that I'm sort of like a private person. I don't like um, to, uh, to mix uh, like my personal life and my uh, professional life, but at the same time, I love like talking in honest. And, uh, and I think my as a designer, you're always creating through your personal inspiration yeah. and yeah. So you can open the book and read about my relationship with my mother, but at the same time, if we will talk, I will not tell you about it. So <laughs> when we talk about feminism. I think that it's in my blood, like it's so much who I am. And I, when I was little, like um, a girl, uh, I was embarrassed by the word feminism. And I used to argue with a lot of people, like telling, we don't have to call it feminism. We can call it like, uh, I don't know, girl's power or, or some different words. When I grew up, I realized that we have to call it feminism, especially today, because today it's so tricky. What are you doing for yourself? And what no it's not like you showed in the beginning of the conversation, like the 50s and, uh, and the corset example. So I would say that today to be a feminist, you can wear corsets, but still being feminist. So it's more complicated than it used, used to be because we did so much progress. So now we can look like deep inside and say, okay, let's, let's think about it again. And hmm. um, so when I design every collection in, it doesn't matter what is the subject or what is the inspiration, I will always make it to skinny and uh, big girls. I will always make sure that I'm doing it for tall women and for short women. And that like, it's uh, optimistic, like you can wear it and like be proud, be happy. Like 
So this is like, I will say that feminism, it's always part of the way, even when it's not part of the inspiration. Yeah, so. I think it's really true, like the optimistic part. I can say that um, we're coming to you uh, with our tours, our physical tours. And when women are wearing the clothes, immediately they're smiling at the mirror yeah. because there is something that's happening. There is, you cannot necessarily explain it with words, but there is something that's happening when you wear something that makes you just happy. Yeah, and I think that it's like uh, opens very important question, like why do we wear black so much? Like for example, it was in the beginning of the way black was when someone dying, like the Victorian, this right. was the beginning. So yeah, I will say that to my wedding, I already told to all the girls that you're not allowed to wear black in my wedding. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, I think it's really important for us to start thinking in a visual way. Right, right. But also, yeah, but that's also a question that you're bringing about the idea of, okay, like maybe wearing high heels, is that feminist or not? If I choose to wear them because I like it, is that okay or not okay? And so I think that like everyone should learn about it and to know why we are wearing high heels and then if you're choosing any way to wear it so it's okay i think like there's a wrench and right. you can choose your own way of being who you are but you should be aware that there is like i don't know some beauty ideal that you should think about just in this weekend i was in my parents home and we had a talk with my brothers and my brothers told me like you, you don't see old women in the television anymore. Everyone is doing Botox and like children are seeing the screen and they don't know how old women are look like right. anymore. And it's a big question for us to think about it. So of course I'm not against Botox. I think that everyone should do what they feel good about themselves in order to be beautiful, but for themselves. If you are looking, yeah, but if we are looking at um, like, I don't know, all the society, so we need to think about it. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think it also really connects to the conversation that we had um, two sessions ago about inclusivity in fashion and the idea of bring the variety of, of women, um, different ages, sizes, powers, yeah. everything um, into the conversation. Uh, Nofar, if we're speaking about a journey, so Shachal's journey is very personal and yours is also very personal because right. you went back to the roots of your uh, grandparents and your ancestors. So what, what did you, why did you even choose to focus on the women in Yemen? Um, I have to say that I find it fascinating because I'm also half uh, Yemeni. Uh, so I love everything that you're doing with that. So what did you discover about the Yemen women and about yourself through this journey? Yeah. Um, first of all, of course, it came from my childhood. I really felt mixed feeling about that. Um, and I didn't know how to approach the other half that I have, that is the Yemenite. And the reason I went there, it's because it's part of my identity. It's my family. And, and there was a point that I couldn't like see it clearly. And I think that if you want to know yourself better and you want to look to the future, uh, you have to go back to your past in a way and learn about it. Uh, I discover a wonderful thing that strong women was there since forever, but uh, they didn't have the chance maybe to use uh, their own voices as we or as I, I can talk about myself as I can do today. Um, for example, they used to sing, to sing about their beliefs, their desires uh, in closed doors, only in front of other women, uh, even to sing erotic songs. That is really? very bizarre right now to think that there was like, uh, they were singing like 400 years ago about those uh, things. So. This is the thing that I discovered and I'm still discovering every day. Another thing 
about the past, about them, about myself and the future. Uh, I hope <laughs> gonna be more clear uh, through the days and the years uh, gonna pass by. Very interesting what you said about the erotic songs because um, I have a friend who's also working in that um, field of feminism and she said that uh, the, most of the things that, the two things that women usually don't speak about is money and sex. Um, okay. So we should start the conversation with that as well. So it's good <laughs> to know that 400 years ago, uh, women did speak about this type of topics and maybe we should um, um, adopt that again. Yeah. So let me ask both of you, uh, what do you feel makes a design a feminine design? It's a very broad question. <laughs> yeah. So I can start by saying that for me, like, as I said, when I was a student, it was, I realized that la la la, and I opened my own business and I it told me like, love yourself. And I started to design, but only in the middle. I suddenly realized that there's actually need to be a process in the design process in order to be a, a feminist outfit. So for example, uh, for me, it was happening also because I have this amazing um, boyfriend and he's perfect. And like every morning when I get up, I used to put like a skinny jeans, which I don't do anymore, but I used to do it. And he used to say, is it comfortable? Yeah. And I used to like, no, it's not comfortable. Like when I'm standing, it's okay. But when I'm sitting, it's like sort of like cuts my body and like, I don't know, it's not like the most comfortable thing to wear. And then he told me like, really just like, so why are you wearing it? And I was like, well, jeans and t-shirt, what else can I wear? And then I started to think about it and I went to like, I had a, this very important meeting and uh, I wanted to wear something that I designed and I suddenly realized that all of the things that I designed to myself, I was in the period time. So all of the things that I designed to myself, they are like really tight in, the, in my stomach. And when I'm in my period, I don't wear anything that touch my stomach because like no way. And then I realized that it's a bit crazy. Like I called my band Love Yourself and I have at least once a month, like a, a period, and I don't have a solution that I can look fancy and uh, nice, but still like feel comfortable about my body. And then I thought to myself that it's crazy that all of the women are having the same circle every month and every day they feel something in their body, but the things that we are wearing are not like, I don't know, related to that circle. And I started to think like from this point of view and I have my feminist pants where are like getting big, like they are one size and they are getting big up to 50 something like sizes. And they are just made for these days that uh, if you have your period or if you go into a wedding and then you ate dinner and you, you need to get it bigger, you can do it, but nobody will know. And, and I feel, and I think that it's very important just to have yourself in your mind and like all of the different days that like in the end of the day, when we are getting in the morning and we are thinking what I'm going to wear today, it's very comfortable. It's very important. How do we feel? So a feminine outfit for me is a, a one that like, um, I don't know, um, that you can feel comfortable, look pretty, like, yeah, and get the same goal, but without suffer or without feeling bad about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Nofa? Uh, first of all, I agree with everything that you said, Shachal. <laughs> um, I think it's basically listening to the woman body and making her feel comfortable. All my silhouettes are super, super, super comfortable. Um, and not trying to change her shape or curves in a way. Um, that's it for me. <laughs> okay, so work with the body that it's kind of like even like a tailor made for each one of, of mm -hmm. uh, the women that you dress. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, 
Shahel, talking about women that you're dressed, um, you had few celebrities. You kind of mentioned a little bit about that, Beyonce and Zendaya, and um, even in the Israeli um, um, kind of uh, field of yeah, yeah. This is the the yeah. wall of all the ladies. So Zilai was one of them, and really very powerful kind of women. So I just wonder when you're designing. For, for these women, for when you're getting a request for a dress for Beyonce, um, yeah. she says she's flawless, but, <laughs> um, but how do you, do you think about the message that they convey when you're making the design? Do you think, what is the process that's going through your mind? So of course it's, it's every time it's something different because it depends on the subject. Like the, sometimes they, they order something custom made and then we do have this uh, thinking process and sometimes they, they're taking something and we do it for them. So, but I will say that starting from the first that dress that they made for Beyonce, I was a bit shocked and a bit afraid and I didn't know what to do. And my brother told me a really smart sentence, like sentence. I was talking with him on the phone and I told him I don't know what to do and I don't know what Beyonce will want because they didn't tell me. And he told me, you don't need to think about what Beyonce will want. You just need to think about what you think is the best for her. Because this is what you do when you think about some um, something, like some design. And in the last dress that I did, it was for the cli video clip of The Lion King. I was talking with Zarina, she's the stylist. And she was sending um, the inspiration board. And for me, it was really like a special moment, like to see the inspiration board of Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And I felt that it's really powerful. Like you can see from the images that they are choosing that you have to do it powerful and you have to do it like full, I don't know, with proud. And like, um, I, I always say, like, how do you say it? um that you're present like true present. yeah yeah like there's something in my dresses that they are really present that you're dominant not yeah. trying to be yeah shy or like quiet or so for me to be present with all of your beauty and all of your energy this is like a, the feminist perspective so for sure this is like the first goal when i'm doing it for the video clip yeah this is the only thing I'm thinking about, actually. Yeah. Very stressful. <laughs> yeah, very um, fun also. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's, yeah. <laughs> it's rewarding as well. Yeah. Uh, Nafal, what about you? Do you have anyone, Shachar, her dream was to dress uh, Beyonce. Do you have anyone uh, in particular in mind that you would like to dress a powerful woman, maybe? Uh, of course, I would love Beyonce to wear my design, <laughs> um, but Community. now actually uh, I'm working on a project, actually in the past year, year and a half, I'm working on a project called uh, Santa Calls for Love. Um, so my dream right now is to dress uh, women from uh, Sana in Yemen. Uh, so Sana, Sana was the city in Yemen, in case you Right. And also Sana was the, the city that my family came from. Um, this project is a documentary project following the process of creating a, a fashion collection inspired, inspired by those um, women uh, and their stories. Uh, and this project will show um, my, journey, my journey of searching those uh, women. I'm gonna tell you, it's not that easy. It's pretty difficult to contact them because of the whole situation that happening uh, in Yemen in the past, I think, six years. Um, so I have contact in Africa <laughs> to do this wow. thing. Wow. Um, the second photo that you, uh, that you showed, it's a house of one of the women that I'm in contact with. Um, so now this is, uh, this is my dream to see my design on those uh, women. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I really hope so. I'm crossing my fingers that it's, hap that it's gonna happen. And also to reveal the their stories and to develop 
a conversation about their past, a family, a what is that to be a, a woman in Yemen right now, um, femininity, body. Um, so this is uh, the, the dream for now. <laughs> And I have a question for you. Once you're, you're finding these uh, women, is it going to be like a mutual work with them, like through the conversation you will make the design or you have designs that you have in mind for them? No, it's going to be like a, a full collaboration. I'm going to say that uh, through uh, their stories. I really want to take like full inspiration by their stories. Uh, I already made like, a small piece but it's not really uh i can't like really show it right now and um, we will have to follow uh, you <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> um so one last question for the two of you before we'll open up for uh questions from um from everyone else is listening um if you have questions now is the good time to put them in the chat box for for shachar and nofa uh but question for the two of you so we've seen that a lot has changed in the fashion world and there was an evolution i mean we're we have more uh power to make decisions on what we are wearing and the brands and the designers that we choose to wear and and, and all of that but if you could maybe point on the things that are still missing what do you think is still missing in the fashion industry to be more pro women um uh going forward we have a long way to to go um it's really a comp I, I think like it's a complicated answer because it's a complicated situation so if feminism would have been like in the past like i don't know that people that women doesn't have um um they cannot vote now we need to give them like the voice now they can vote uh, and then like you like you show like the example with the corset and and fashion like a few levels that you are wearing and like in the past, they think that it was so bad that we could have say like, okay, now we need to vote and we need to have like, uh, I don't know, um, if I want to do a abortion, like not to have my child, I, need, I can need, I, I should have like the right to do that. And because today we sort of have like this situation that it looks like we have um, uh, the same, um, we have reached the point that we have the same uh, uh, rights as men, so it looks like everything okay. Now it's more complicated. So I will say that in my point of view, and it's, it's only my opinion, but I think that in order to be like, uh, to reach the goal where women will feel better about themselves, we need to change like everything. We need to change the reality that we are watching. We need to change the women that are in the news we need to change um, just the way we think when we go to work. Like we need to change the, the law in Israel for sure. And um, we need to uh, give women and for example, like a, a young couple to choose who want to take out uh, a vacation after uh, uh, we get in birth. And we need to change the word vacation because it's not a vacation, it's a work. So I think it's a process, but I will say that the first step we need to do uh, in order to get there and um, we actually need to to start thinking like a positive way of thinking about our like about ourselves and this is why i called my brand love like i told love yourself because i think this is the beginning like to start thinking a positive way uh, to live my life like what i can make to make myself happy I'm not gonna think about everyone else. I'm not gonna think about my children, my family, my friends. First of all, I'm gonna think about myself and feel good about it, not feel bad about it. Then we can start thinking about society and like other stuff. Yeah, I, I agree that it definitely makes it more complicated nowadays because it seems on the surface that 
we're equal and everything is okay. But even if you just look at the pandemic, um, COVID-19 really changed life of many women. Um, and many of them, most of the women um, who are out of job right now are women because of the industry, because they were kind of forced or chose to stay with their kids at home while the kids are Zooming. So there are different other things that we still need to work on when it comes to uh, to uh, equality, like an actual way of, of equality. And I think it definitely starts with education from like the young, young generation, right from the beginning. Um, Nofal, what do you think? We have a lot of questions from the audience, but Nofal, maybe you can share with us if you have anything in mind of what is missing. I think that you said all, but like uh, if I can put like two words for that is, equality and romant uh, uh, romantic this is the thing that are missing for me i hope maybe in this crazy time we are we are at maybe something will change that perspective and how people are thinking like shahar said uh but this is two things that are missing it's really like big words but i can't like really describe specific it's that for me interesting um and we have a question for both of you from joanne um where in the u.s your merchandise offered so how can we buy shahar and nofal cookie mm -hmm. so I've been in a few stores like in LA before the COVID-19, but now uh, I'm not working with them anymore. So at the moment, moment it's only through my website and um, through Instagram. And of course, that everything is written, but if you have a question, you can always ask me um, via email or Instagram, and I will love to help you. Yeah. Nafa, what about you? Uh, yeah, also on the website and Instagram for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and another question, uh, Nafar, for you about your logo. I will share it again. If you can explain more about what is it exactly we're looking at. Yeah, ah, we open it. Okay, perfect. So the logo is basically uh, a Yemenite amulet. Uh, back in the days, uh, they can put, they could put like stuff inside, like mezuzah. <laughs> like prayers and wishes, but only for specific uh, things, like uh, to have a boy, uh, the, the woman job in her family and society. And now I took the, the amulet and transform it to more modern uh, shape. And now you can uh, wish yourself whatever you want. You can put um, uh, whatever you feel like, uh, um, and that's it. This, this is my logo that I emulate. And the logo is in in a lot of different um, uh, all of your and all of your clothes. And I think it's really nice right. the idea that you're taking your own blessing with you. So you're not necessarily need the physical uh, right. blessing, but also that will tell you that you're safe. I love that idea. That's right. Um, Tamara is asking for the website. I will send all of you the websites and all the, the ways that you can uh, connect with Nafar and with Chacha um, in the following email. So even if you are not following right now, don't worry, I will send you all the information um, so you can follow them. One question for, uh, um, for Shacha is how difficult it is to have a client like Beyonce? Uh, so Beyonce is not difficult at all. Like she's the best client ever, but it's difficult like to do the process, like not to get nervous and like not to think about it. Like it's the most important thing in the world. It's not. And like to, to stay in a proportion when you work with a person like Beyonce and the, and the, the beat is very fast. Like uh, there's no time. There's no, there always like no time and always the pressure to do things fast. So if, you, if I cannot no, get nervous about it, so it's always better. So this is the difficult part. Right? Interesting. A uh, question from both, for both of you. Um, what is your go-to outfits? Uh, what are your go-to outfits? Do you have an unofficial uniform or do you switch it up on a daily basis? 
course I'm switching here. Yeah? Like, of course, every morning it's a surprise for me too. Even when I have some important meeting, I always have three different dresses I can wear because I will get up in the morning, then I will decide. But I'm wearing my ready to wear, which is like today, it's, on, it's only like, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm wearing all of the collection that I did like every day, like to work. Uh, for me, I'm, uh, I'm wearing my ready to wear. <laughs> uh, I'm switching it every day, of course. Uh, if I want to have like a total look uh, that it's from uh, only pink or black, so I have all the options. But yeah, every day, something Very else. Cool. <laughs> um, Francine is asking how much interest, if any, is there in the Israeli media in what you are both doing? Uh, it's a very sad answer, I will say, but I feel that the media, generally, not just the Israeli media, but I live in Israel, so maybe the Israeli more, um, are always interesting in, um, how do you say, Seubonim, uh, like Rechilot. Like um, all the, the yellow yeah. rumor stuff. Yellow yeah, rumor. like they always want to hear yeah. about the conversation that I had with the, I don't know, the Beyonce stylist about what I think about celebrities in Israel. And I always uh, never say, but I think so. They, they don't have so much interest, not in uh, feminism, not in uh, making your dream come through, not in positive way of thinking. Like this is my opinion. But, um, and it's interesting because you, Shachel, this is your opinion, even though you're one of like the, the designers yeah. that I can say are very embraced by the Israeli media. And at the same yeah. time... Because I will say, like, for example, I had this conversation for the most, like, uh, the Mutzay um, Shabbat, like the end of the week uh, news, and they wanted to do like a show, like a, a video about me. And they always look about like if I had a sad story in my past or if I think something bad about some celebrity in Israel. And when I say no, so they're like, okay, so we're not going to do it. And I was like, why not? You have the opportunity to be so much like positive and bring so, like, so much important knowledge to the front, but they don't want to. So I'm a bit disappointed, even though, yeah, I have a lot of interview and like, yeah. But I always feel that they are want because they right. want it because for, for more, yeah, to dig in. Yeah, uh, Nufa, what about you? Um, I don't have a lot to add to this question. I, I feel that I'm uh, learning about this subject, and I'm still young. Like the brand is still young, so I didn't had a lot of opportunity to talk. Uh, no, I'm sure about about cooking. Be sure. <laughs> no, I'm sure about that, of course. But I'm young, it's a baby, so it's fine. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this question. Um, Esther is saying, in Hebrew, Tanug Lirot Velishmo Israeliot, Tirot, Yetziratiot, Marshimot. It's a pleasure to see and, uh, and hear. Uh, such an impressed uh, young Israeli designer, so creative. So thank you, Esther. I will say thank you for the compliment for the two of them. Thank you. Um, a very important question that is coming also is, you're making the design, but what about the actual manufacturing of the clothes? Who does that for you? So today someone just sent me a message, like who, who are making the prints for my brand? And I just answer me. And then he was like, ah, oh, you can make a print for me. And I was like, no, I don't have time. <laughs> like, yeah, so I'm doing everything. Like I'm doing the embroidery. I actually only me and my mother, we are both doing it together. The prints, I make it. And uh, the manufacturer, there's like the couture and the brider are in my studio. So I'm very like, I know every stitch and like every, I'm very like, I'm uh, the like boss that knows Coffee. everything. Yeah. And they're ready to wear. Of course, you are always like in order to make the pro the product, you have to be very in touch, like with every single step in the process. So I will know how many um, buttons someone bought, and how much time does it taking, and how much money, and how, and when it will be ready. Like, yeah, everything related. So you, the process is actually part of the design. 
So it's very important to pay attention that they're doing it right and like they did not mistake any, like anything. So the majority has been done um, in your yeah. studio and, and besides that you also work with... Um, Tulkarem. Tulkarem. Tulkarem, it's a Palestinian uh, city. And yeah, but even when it's in Tulkarem, that we are sending video because they know Hebrew. So we're, I'm sending a video and they can see it. And if, if they don't understand, then we always like bring it back to me so I can put like pins on the fabric and show them where it's supposed to be, of course. Yeah. Nafa, what about you? Um, I'm doing a lot of the stuff. Um, but I have a sewer that she's like my mother. Uh, I didn't uh, study fashion. I came from visual communication. So the sewing part is something that I'm learning, uh, but I'm sitting next to her all the time. <laughs> um, but it's, all amazing. The it's amazing that both of you are doing it hand in hand with uh, the people that you work with. It's not that yeah. obvious nowadays. I think that it's super, super important. And I don't know, for me, it's super personal. So I have to see everything. And more than that, all the press, all the, the, the prints, uh, the high press, I mean, uh, all the beads I, I'm doing by hand and all the bags uh, my mother is doing. So it's super, super small and Love super, it. super intimate. Amazing. Uh, one final question. Um, Yair is asking, what role does men play when talking about feminism and fashion? What do you think? The most important one. No, <laughs> I just mentioned that my, my boyfriend, like, uh, he's the one that opened my eyes. I think that when you are close, and I'm, I'm especially talking about the close uh, men to the women, you have a very important... Um, job to do because uh, like uh, when you have some uh, i don't know when you are in the middle of an argument with someone you're not always can see all the information like the whole picture then you need someone to take it take you out and tell you but shaka listen you are very nervous right now just listen to what you're saying and to explain you the situation so i will say that men have the ability to do that um, with feminism uh, fashion, like for example, to give compliments, to ask if it's comfortable, to ask how does she feel in the outfit, and um, what does she feel like when, for example, when I need to go somewhere and I'm like, I don't have anything to wear. It's always because I'm thinking about someone else that will, will see me. So maybe the, the man can help at the same moment and tell her like, okay, like, what do you feel wearing? Something comfortable, something like, don't think about being pretty right now. In the end of the, like, after she's getting dressed, maybe put some red lipstick and that's it. Because when a woman feel pretty, then she is prettier than before. And this is maybe the man's job. Not all the job, like, but part of it. Right. So far, what do you think? I think that the main thing is to be supportive and to encourage the woman to do whatever she feels like and to wear whatever she wants and whatever she feels comfortable with. But supportive, I think that this is the, this is the word yeah, for I a man what role. Both, what you both are saying is basically that... Um, it's a, it's a mutual goal mm -hmm. um, to, um, to empower women and, and, and that women will feel um, powerful through fashion, but also through every other aspect of their life. It's a mutual goal and, and men should definitely be partners in, in, in that agenda as well. Um, um, since we're running out of time, I see one more question about where can we buy the clothes. So I will say it's on both uh, the websites um, and I will share the websites with you again uh, through email with all of you. So you will have all the information on the website and on Instagram and everything, any other way that you can follow um, Shachar and Nufar. I want to thank Shachar and Nufar for dedicating the time to talk about this specific uh, topic and thank everyone who joined us. Uh, next week, we're gonna have 
our last uh, conversation of Fashion That Matters. So I hope you'll join us next week uh, for a conversation about unique textile. Here it is, our next event about Israeli textile using unique materials. It's gonna be exactly on Sunday, exactly the same time. 5 p.m. Israel time, 10 a.m. Um, East Coast time, and I will send you more information about that. Please follow us on Instagram. Send us email to let us know how this webinar went, and we will send you the recording of this session and other sessions um, as soon as possible. So again, thank you very much for joining us, and thank you for all of these great comments that you're sharing with us. Uh, about how wonderful this conversation was. Thank you so much. Um, have a safe week, day. Uh, it's, uh, we're starting lockdown in Israel right now. It's the first hour of the third lockdown here in Israel. So just, uh, I will say, health for everyone and, and we'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>